In today's video, you'll learn five steps that will help you connect with and then impress anyone, no matter how unreachable they may seem. We'll do this by breaking down some tricks used by Mr. Beast, Tim Ferriss, and Yes Theory to connect with people like Will Smith, Justin Trudeau, Elon Musk, and more. To start, you need to get on the person's radar. The easiest way to do this is to find a low traffic connection, a less in-demand person who knows the person you're trying to meet. Because they have fewer people asking for their time, they'll be more open to talking with you. For a concrete example, let's look at Tim Ferriss. He attributes his success in large part to the connections he made at South by Southwest. Listen to his strategy. When a panel ended, instead of flooding the scene to get in line to talk to a panelist, I would actually talk to the moderator, who people tend to ignore. This is a great strategy for networking events and conferences, but it's also something you can do when trying cold outreach to someone specific. For instance, because most people think of Charlie as the face of Charisma on Command, he receives hundreds of emails a day, which means most have to go unread. But for years, if he emailed me, it was almost guaranteed that I would see it, and I could then forward it along to Charlie if I thought he'd want to see it too. I probably just ruined my inbox by sharing this, so now you'll need a new low traffic connection for Charlie, but the principle still stands. It's important to note here, a low traffic connection won't automatically introduce you just because you ask. So how do you get someone to want to make a connection for you? There are two ways to do this, and if you do either well enough, you can even skip step one. The first way is to be a beacon. Do cool sh** people want to be a part of. For instance, Will Smith accepted Yes Theory's challenge to Hella Dive because he knew it would get their channel more attention. I love, I love, uh, I love what you guys are doing, and I, I want to support that as, as much as possible. This is one great way to be a beacon. Have a project that helps people outside of yourself. This is how the Buried Life guys were able to play basketball with Obama when he was one of the most in-demand people on the planet. It's also how Mr. Beast caught Elon Musk's attention. Elon liked Jimmy's mission to protect the environment. Well, when we did uh, Team Trees, the so our goal was 20 million and we hit like 6 million in the first few days and it started to slow down. And then out of nowhere, Elon Musk just replied to one of my tweets and he's just like, oh, this looks interesting. Then Elon just donated a million dollars and then all of a sudden now the world cares and it's yeah. like paying attention. It may seem like being a beacon requires a huge audience, but that's not the case at all. Sometimes being a beacon can just mean being the most fun looking person in the room. When Yes Theory wanted to meet Justin Trudeau, their plan centered mostly around getting his staff's attention by wearing bright, fun Christmas sweaters to an event. If you stick around the place long enough and look ridiculous, people just come up to you. You don't even have to do it. You've been dubbed the sweater guys. Oh, I <laughs> so regret not wearing my awesome sweater. <laughs> if being a beacon seems daunting, there's another fast, simple way you can connect with anyone you admire. Lead with value. This seems obvious, but almost everyone does this wrong. The most common mistake people make is trying to mask a value take as a value give. The quintessential one is, I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee and pick your brain. That's not leading with value. $5 for an hour of someone's time is a bad deal. One red flag to the other person that you're not really leading with value is how often they hear you say, I. For example, in this next clip, a Logan Paul fan snuck into an event to try to get a job, and Logan actually gives him a chance to pitch himself. Watch this as an example of what not to do. No, like I just need to talk to you. I'm really, I'm trying to talk to your about? brother. I'm trying to talk about business. Trying to talk about trying to get a job. Like I want to, I want to do media. I want to. I've been trying to. Get, what I have, are you good at? I was seven dances. I did like What's that. I did. I, I did that video. You know, like going oh, you, like that. Oh, you, oh, you, yeah, you know. Oh, so you really got what it takes. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Then why would I, I, I need a job? mentor? Well, need a why mentor. would I do that? Totally fair question by Logan, and in response, the guy continues to talk in I, and he makes another common mistake. Listen to this next clip and see if you can spot it. You know, life isn't about handouts. You know what I'm saying? I know. I'm you not trying to get a handout. I'm not trying to get. What a are you handout. trying to do? I'm trying to work hard I, for a little money. No money. I don't know. I can get a job somewhere else. All I want to move to LA, and I want to. I want to be able to be part of that. Look, I have to go. This may seem counterintuitive, but most successful people aren't interested in undefined free work. So if you want to work with someone you admire, get specific on how you can help them. A good framework to use is, I have such and such past experience, which will let me do X for you, where X is something that you know from researching them that they actually value. If you're meeting people at an event, a great line to instantly find out what people value is, so what were you hoping to get out of this event? Starting like this feels organic and clues you in on how you can help them. Do this and you'll be amazed at how many great relationships you make. 
The absolute best way to lead with value is to give value without asking for anything in return. A good example of this was Mr. Beast with PewDiePie. I spent all my money on ads so he can remain the number one most subscribed to channel in the world. It's the day of the Super Bowl and these are our blankets. And if for some reason they confiscate the blankets, we're wearing sub to PewDiePie shirts. We will advertise PewDiePie to 100 million people today. Now, most of us can't buy billboards or Super Bowl tickets just to connect with someone. So here's a quick example from a friend of mine that anyone can copy. He heard on a podcast that a big YouTuber he admired was interested in reading a particular book, but hadn't gotten around to it. So my friend bought the book in hard copy, then went to their next live event, waited around after, and gave it to them. It wasn't expensive, but it showed thoughtfulness and initiative, which got the YouTuber interested in at least talking more to my friend. They ended up giving him an internship and eventually a full-time job. Now, if you want to make multiple people want to connect with you at the same time, you can combine being a beacon and leading with value by hosting events. Mr. Beast is a good example of someone who does this very well. This is the largest stadium in the world and inside are the 10 biggest creators on YouTube. This is $1 million and whichever one of them I find last keeps it. Yeah! Imagine you're an influencer who gets that invite. You get to have fun, meet awesome people, and potentially win a million dollars. Of course, you're going to say yes. This lets Mr. Beast invite and connect with whoever he wants. And you can do this on a smaller scale by starting a club, fundraiser, or meetup that people want to attend or speak at. Now, leading with value is important, especially when you're trying to get the attention of someone whose attention is in high demand. But it's equally important not to forget the human element. Connecting with someone you admire shouldn't be transactional. So don't focus on connecting with people just because you think they can help you get famous or make you money. Don't be the person who emails Ben and Chris at Charisma On Demand. Aim for people you have a genuine interest in. Also, one quick tip for when you do connect, abandon first instinct questions. Make a list of the questions you think the person gets asked by most people, then throw that list in the trash. The person you admire is bored of hearing the same questions over and over. So ask something original, something they'll be excited to answer. Beyond that, the best thing you can do is stop hero worshiping. For someone who's rich or famous, it's easy to find people that look up to them. What's harder is finding someone who's comfortable around them and makes them laugh. At the end of the day, the person you want to connect with is just a person. So once you've followed the steps in this video and given yourself the best chance to reach them, let your personality shine through. Now, if you want to be better at making amazing first impressions so that you can go into these conversations confident that if you do get a chance to talk with someone, they'll definitely want to see you again, you may like our program Charisma University. It's a step-by-step -step guided program guaranteed to give you more charisma and confidence in just 30 days. Here are just a few of the things that past members have written us. The first comes from a guy who was promoted to a senior position early in his career. He says, I don't even have a bachelor diploma, yet they want me to fill this position. And when asked why, this was the answer. You have great social skills, which is rare for an engineer. You can think quick on your feet and you are open and self-assured in your demeanor. Thank you so much for all that you have taught me. You have truly changed my life because without CU, I wouldn't have qualified for that position in a million lifetimes. This next one comes from another person who started a new job. They say, I wanted to let you know that I nailed those first few days at work. Everything that I needed was right there at the moment I needed it. The confidence, the energy, the smile, the positive mindset. With all your tips from last Tuesday in mind, it just could not go wrong. And this last one comes from an army officer. They say, I used to come off overly serious and reserved, which got in the way of connecting with new people. Since taking the course, I have way more confidence to just go out and strike up a conversation with random people. It's also helped me handle body language and physical contact a lot smoother. And in general, I notice people are smiling way more when I'm around. Thank you for making it. I'm glad I joined. If you do join CU, it comes with a 60 day money back guarantee, which is 100% for any reason at all. We make it 60 days, even though the course is only 30 days, because we want to make sure that every single member truly feels like they're getting a ton of value from the course. If you want to check the course out, click the link on screen now or below in the description. We've had thousands of members go through this program and get a ton out of it, and we'd love for you to do the same. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.